Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial on the R programming language. So in this video we're going to talk about how to create a matrix in the R programming language. So let's go ahead and get started. I already have the R Studio up and running. So first what we're going to do is create a vector. I'm going to call it V and it's going to contain the elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Alright so let's go ahead and print out V so we can see our vector right here. Perfect. So now the first thing we need to do is create a variable name for our matrix. I'm going to call it A and I'm going to set A equal to our function matrix which will allow us to create a matrix where it's going to take in the vector and then we're going to tell it the number of rows that we want. So I'm going to put two for rows and then three for columns here. So now we get two rows and three columns should be the result. So I'm going to go ahead and print A and you can see that we get two rows and three columns here as expected. Okay, but suppose um, I, I messed up somewhere. I want it, I want it actually to be three by two, uh, three by two matrix. So that's three rows and two columns. Well, we could do that as well here, just like that. And now let's print our A. So now you can see that we have three rows and two columns. Okay, now uh, suppose you weren't good at math and you don't know how many um, elements there were in your vector. So we had six elements. So of course having a three by two or a two by three matrix makes sense. It gives us all of the elements. But suppose I had, um, let's do a three by four. Suppose I put four here instead. What would happen? Um, usually I would expect a warning, but uh, the way R works, it seems to duplicate the the numbers into the matrix. So now I'm still going to have my three uh, rows, but I'm going to have two extra columns. So it's just going to be a repeat of the first two columns. So let's see this. So you can see that I have three rows and now I have four columns where the column three is basically the same as column one and column four is basically the same as column two. So um, I definitely find that uh, pretty pretty strange uh, but that's how the R programming language works. Okay so let's continue here. I'm going to make our, our matrix a uh, two by three. All right, so our A is now a two by three matrix. So how do we get the transpose of that matrix? We can use another function. We'll call it T. And actually I'm gonna set it A, uh, we'll call it A transpose. And I'm gonna set it equal to T of A. So the function T of T will give us the transpose of a matrix, whatever matrix we put into our parameter. In this case, we're inputting A, our A matrix. Okay, and so now let's print a transpose and we get the transpose of A here. Okay, so that's nice, that's good. Uh, what else can we do with matrix? Uh, with matrices, we can combine them. So I can combine them based off of, of the columns. So if they have the same number of columns. So let's create a, another. Now first let me reprint A. So A has uh, three, three columns and two rows. So if I want to add another column here, I need to do it with a matrix that has the same number of rows. So I'm going to create another matrix. I'm going to call it B. And B is going to be a matrix containing the values 1, 2, and it's going to be a 2 by 1 matrix. So it's going to have two rows and one column. So now let's print out B. So we see it has two rows and one column. 
So now I want to combine this column with our A matrix. So we can do that by using another function called uh, C bind. And we put in our first matrix and then uh, the next matrix that we want to append to our first matrix. So this, that's B, that's our B matrix. And you can see now that we get, this would be our A matrix here uh, from the third column down. And then we have uh, combined this B matrix to our A matrix here. So that, that's pretty handy and that can come in handy uh, uh, for many different reasons. Now, um, that's when they have the same rows. But suppose that I wanted to combine two matrices that had the same number of columns. So before there was the same number of rows and now I want the same number of columns. So let me create a matrix. I'm going to call it capital C. And again, I'm creating a matrix. So C will take in, uh, we'll just do five, six. And I want it to have uh, maybe one, maybe one row. And no, 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 no. I want two rows and I want one column. Okay, so let's print C. And now what I can do is I can use R bind to combine B and C. And you can see that I have, I am combining these two on the uh, column. So we've added more rows. And with C bind, we added more columns. All right. So let's see. The last thing that I kind of want to talk about is deconstructing a matrix. And we can do that very simply by applying the C function, which is the same function that we use to create vectors. So. Let's print out A, and C of A is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Looks very familiar. Well, that's exactly what we, um, that's the vector that we use to create our A matrix. Okay, we can also do the same thing for B, C of B, 1, 2, and you, you get the idea from there. So thank you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, please leave likes, questions, comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys all on the next video.